Welcome to the Just Word Podcast. I'm Pat Bolland. The Just Word Podcast is brought to you by Just Wealth, investing the way it should be, just for you. Melanie, a pleasure to meet you. Very nice to meet you as well, Pat. Melanie, I went to the um, Money Mama website, and it talks about an event that happened on November the 23rd of 2018. Can you share that with us? What, what was it? I call it my transformational, transformational date. Um, I used to read a book called The Very Hungry Caterpillar. I don't know if you're familiar with it, to my son. And this is kind of the same analogy. Um, I was in a relationship where uh, I learned a lot. And that day I decided to choose me. I decide to choose my path, if I may say. Um, sometimes in life, we have to learn a certain way. <laughs> this lesson was a little bit of a tough one. But again, I, I feel so blessed that I, I did learn it because not only my energy bank was empty, my emotional bank was empty, and my... <laughs> actual bank account was empty. And so it was a big leap in my life, though, if I look back, I've always leaped tremendously, but this leap was even more challenging. I had a 15 month old baby girl and I just didn't know how it would work. But like I have it tattooed on my forearm, let it go and have faith. And in life, this is something that I value. And this is the leap, something that I believe in. And when I decided to pull out of this relationship, uh, again, I didn't know how it would work out, but it all worked out because I choose my health. And that's why I'm such a big advocate, like you say, to fill your cup first. And I know it's really like, <laughs> gee, calls it, call it cheesy, call it, you know, it's so, like everybody says that. Right. But until you actually have a life event that forces you to do it for your own health and mental health, then you become the butterfly like this story. Right. And I remember being on, on my bathroom floor and my condo back in the day, my son noticed and my son said, I don't know why, mommy, you're always so sad. And as a, as a parent, you know, I put a smile on and I was. I thought I, I did a great job, but letter that we know that our kids have such an incredible intuition. They just like FBI agents, <laughs> they know exactly. And so I was able to give this, uh, this analogy to say, you know, I let someone put me in a cocoon, but mommy is slowly nibbling a hole in this cocoon and I will become the beautiful butterfly. And sometimes that all you need is faith and trust that I'm very spiritual, that God will send you earth angel. That's what I call them um, along the way to guide you, to give you hope, to lead a hand. And that I received at that time. I was so shocked of how many people came into my life helping and just give me this inspiration. And that's what inspired me to create Money Mama because I knew that I wasn't the only woman who was going through that, through another transition. It's my second separation, right? And losing all that you felt that you've built, granted, when you have an open heart and again, you trust, you know, and you took you take this experience to create and to help others. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what mom, Money Mama is, okay. is we want to be the mom of women who's going through a very tough transition, doesn't know what to do with their finances and rebuild. We're here. Now, did, you, mm -hmm. did you get therapy through all this, Melanie, or, or these I concepts did. that had been... Absolutely. I did. I reached out for therapy. Absolutely. This was beyond, you know, what my friends and family could, um, 
help me with at you know to a certain limit right they're not professional <laughs> uh, psychotherapists but you know absolutely mental health it, it is and that's the beautiful gift that I receive is asking for help for me was very challenging I'm a very proud person I've been on my own since I'm 16 so I have that philosophy of like I can do it myself I'll do it myself but at that moment <laughs> I just could not do it myself so again it's a beautiful gift when you open up and you're you're seeing what's in front of you and it's like okay you know what no I, I truly need some advice and some help and that's in what the I meantime do. you're you're still trying to raise your son and your baby I daughter think. right yeah exactly yeah and that's but that's my reason why you know when I look at my children I I'm such a blessed mama you know and they give me strength they truly give me strength and I want to inspire them like I think every parents can relate we want to inspire our kids not only to be better than us but also being kind, considerate human being and resilient and independent. Those are a lot of values that I treasure. And so I'm very bold and honest with my kids. You know, I, they see me cry, but I share sometimes, you know what? This is what life brought to mommy, but here's what I'm doing with it. It's okay to cry. It's okay to feel angry. It's okay to feel whatever you feel is okay. But the, you can't stay there. You need to use these emotions, acknowledge them, and then move forward. What is it giving you? It's giving you a gift. Because every experience in our life, Pat, I don't, I'm sure you can relate. You know, give us something to bring us further, to form us in a certain way, to inspire other, to help other and share, right? It's, it's where being vulnerable comes, right? I, I'm a very vulnerable person and some people say I'm sharing way too much. But to me, it's like if I can inspire one person to continue who had lost their hope perhaps because I was almost there. If I didn't have my kids, you know, as much as I, you know, my friends were, oh my gosh, even my former husband was absolutely amazing through the process and transition. It was, you know, my kids were, you know, you know, I've got to get back up. I've got to get back up. Yeah. So the, they provide the stable emotional base for you, but in the end you become a positive role model. Oh yeah. Every parents, right. It's, yeah. it's not, do what I say for me, it's do what I do, right? Because and integrity, <laughs> you cannot tell my friends. <laughs> but you, you, you were in the financial industry. I, I, I read through your CV and it was in the insurance industry. Did that make uh, the transition any easier to create Money Mama? Yes, absolutely. Because indirectly, I always coach clients. You know, when I was young, I was blessed to have my grandmother. She's in the back there. Um, at a very young age, I remember having a tea on the front porch and she was a real estate investor. So she would tell me about RRSPs and why I should invest in real estate. And I would see her manage all the real estate that she owned and collect the rent and repairing. And, and it, it inspired me to create the same for me. And, I'm, you know, so I had those that I had purchased multiple property. I knew how to do leveraging. I know. You know, I, I'm very aligned in my spending and I know all of these techniques. So in my transition and in creating Money Mama, again, like you said at the beginning, Money Mama is all about experiences. Yes, I've read quite a bit of books, but I based it mostly on what I've experienced through my life journey so far. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So what are the key objectives, if you will, of Money Mama? Like, can you nail it down to two or three things that you're trying to accomplish with every uh, person that comes in contact with the website? Well, first off is really a non-judgmental environment that I want women to, to feel safe to come and knock on our door and say, I really don't know what to do with this. I got into a lot of debt or I'm in, in transition you know, my husband was managing the finances or I'm not making enough income. So it, it's really 
getting these women into the door, having a conversation in front of a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, and just like a friend would do, mm-hmm. is listen first and then see if they are ready to make that step. Because at the end of the day, knowledge is power, but knowledge is no power if we don't make any action. And sometimes we're just not ready to make these actions. Just like how many times I had, I tried to leave that relationship 20 plus times. And when my therapist asked me, what made you leave this time? It's like, this was, this was it. This, I was ready. Yeah, right? you drew and a line in the thing. sand. So how would you describe your perfect, uh, I'll use the word client, but I mean, maybe you use a different word, partner or or, or oh, student or they become my friends you know it's right. like I've, bec- I've become their, be- their biggest fan like I love seeing women in my case because I work with women no offense to men <laughs> I just work with women I just love seeing them blossom and open up and step into what they truly care about and just being unapologetic and just go for it you know, without, there's always going to be doubt. Let's be honest. I still have doubts. We still always have that little voice sometimes. But again, I become their biggest cheerleader and their guide. I always say, I don't have the answer. You have the answer inside you, right? I'm just here to pull them out and to organize them sometimes in a way that makes more sense and that keeps you motivated. What do you see as the most common challenges that women face in finances or in life? And then how do you uh, address that? You know, worthiness is the first word that comes to mind. It's worthiness. Worthy. Wow. Woman, I, I don't know if it's society, I don't want to blame anybody. It's not my goal to point fingers, okay? But as a woman myself, you know, I can relate, obviously, (laughs) that society or sometimes the way that we are raised to be a certain way, to act a certain way uh, because we are women or we are mom. You know, we hear that often. Like now you're a mom. You should not dot, dot, dot. Right. Right. So we repress a lot of things that to us is important because of perhaps the fear of judgment, or also if we come from a more conservative environment, financial environment, we don't think it's achievable. So a lot of women come and say, well, I don't have, let's say a PhD or I don't have a master degree or so, but it all comes down to worthiness. And I'm actually surprised you say worthiness because I would have thought it would have been something like uh, financial education or confidence that they can do the books or know where the numbers fall because they haven't had that experience but when we do the mindset together Mm. most of the time it comes from feeling unworthy or a lot of shame about money right so i know it's not the answer that is typical right but the education comes after because once you unblock these these feeling that no, it's not, I'm not worthy of this. I don't think I can have that because it's, it's too good for me. Right. Mm -hmm. Then the, the learning and the education comes along much better because now they're open and they are seeing their own path, their own vision and whatever that means to them. And that's the thing, right? I always share it on my page. It's like rich doesn't mean being a millionaire for everybody. There's so many different meaning to rich. And that's where we discover with my clients is that what does that mean to you, right? Because we all want to keep up with the Jones, right? Indirectly, we all get pulled into the dream of being millionaire, but it might not be that for you. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? Mm. And that's the acceptance. And again, once you feel so worthy of whatever that is to you, 
nobody can change that in a, in a beautiful way, right? It gives you power to stay focused. Yeah, let's talk about the process a little bit, because if, uh, if worthiness is the big thing that and education is down the list, um, the, your friend now comes in and, and uh, she has a coffee with you. What's the first thing you talk about then? Well, we discovered what's important to her. We have a conversation, like I said, a very friendly conversation, and we determine if she's ready. Is she ready for the next step? right? Education right. is not, it's just the second step, right? It's not that far down the list, oh. right? It's just, again, discovering where her concerns are, where her fear are, what's happened to her in the past, because there is, they might have been money trauma, right? It's just discovering these area where she wants to see improvement. And then it's, it's just moving forward with it. It's, it's as simple as that. It, start, it all starts with one simple conversation. If I'm the right coach for her, then I'll let her know. If I'm not, then I will pass her forward to somebody else that might be better, with depending on whatever it is for her. Uh, when you read the statistics, uh, marriages often break down, or one of the more common reasons they break down is because of finances. Is that your experience? Uh, Yes and no, because of my two separation. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. yeah. No, yes. not, I'm not thinking oh. about you personally. I'm thinking about the people that you work with, your, your clients. Oh, you yes. Yes, absolutely. And it, it is a fact. I mean, I've gone through two separation. That's why I'm like relating, right? Because yes, yeah. there was some money. It wasn't money issues, but we were not aligned in our money values and what we wanted to build together. And yes, that resulted in a divorce. Right. So, yes, absolutely. It is the number one reason why people most of the time divorce. It's, it's very high on the list. So, but do, they, do they open up easily when talking about that? I, I mostly work only with women. I don't work with couples yet. No, no. But I mean, do the women open up easily about uh, oh, the finances absolutely. being the cause? Absolutely. And my first response to that is, Let's work on yourself so you can inspire him without pulling and pushing and right? right. Inspiration is such a strong tool. Once you step into, because that you are in a relationship or not, you are it. You should be having that mindset that you're supporting yourself. Because once you have the expectation of, my husband or my partner should support me, then that's where the friction starts happening, especially if the values are completely different, right? And the spending habits are different. So how can you bring people together is by bringing their and finding out the values that are common together, common co values, and then you build from that together. You don't yeah, have to okay. be the same. So that's interesting because you, you say you only work with the women right now. How, how many of your, uh, the people that you work with, how many of them would be single three quarters of your clients? And so the, my real question is, okay. what do you do about the other quarter? You say you're going to work with married couples in the future, but um, why not do it right away? Well, I always ask. That's the thing. I always ask when I know that there's a couple, I always ask, would your partner be willing to join us? Ah, uh, okay. And the answer is typically no. Want to do it myself first. Well, there's women that say, no, you know what? I want to do it myself first. And the other side is sometimes he's not willing. Right. Okay. So there's both. There's like the independent side. Like, let me get confident in my finance. So then I can bring confidence into my conversation with my partner. Right. Because then I would look better that I know what I'm doing. And then right. there's the other side where it's just not happening at that moment. I get it. But I, I get it. Because so what you're doing is you're building up their worthiness. If that's their biggest obstacle, you're building up their worthiness. So they go back into their relationship stronger. Correct. And they don't need to fight. They don't need to prove, right? You just go into a conversation, an empowering conversation to say, 
Let's do that together. Here's like the excitement. You know, like a kid, when you start learning how to write, you go to your parents and say, I can write my name, right? The excitement of that. Yeah. I want to bring that into the couple's finances to say, here's baby, you know, let's do that together. Like, look what I've learned. What do you think? Right? Let's, let's build something. And again, find a common ground and then build from that. Because obviously you married this person because you saw beautiful things in them. Right? And it doesn't need to be totally aligned. That's why, again, there is an account that we open and we call it the blow money, not only to make them laugh but as a couple that blow account you cannot say anything you have it if she wants to spending on shoes and have three thousand pair of shoes you cannot say it if he wants to spend it on you know cigars then that's okay too that you cannot so they cannot so it reduces dramatically the financial stress because it's like okay that that's your vice both vices shopping whatever it could be but that x amount of dollar that we determine together cannot be like pointed out and say you spend it on this no you have a determined account and that's it right so there's no conflict well there's always always a letter conflict but it reduces the conflict like 95 percent you, you know, on that positive message, let's just leave it there, Melanie, but a, a real pleasure to have a chat. Wish you continued success. Yeah, thank you so much, Pat. You know, it's I'm, I'm very grateful that you reached out and uh, hopefully this interview will help. You know, I'm, I'm building something for couples soon, so I'm, I'm excited to do that. Looking forward to it, Melanie. We'll, we'll do a follow-up. Sounds good. Have a beautiful day. Okay, thanks, you too. Okay, take care. Bye. Melanie Russo, founder of Money Mama.